me, the allure of the detective adventure game is not combing the scene for clues or doing research in archives. It's not even more exciting tasks like interrogation or performing CSI-like experiments. Although legwork like that probably comprises almost all of real detective work, the Hollywood fantasy I grew up on told me that the thrill of the investigation is in making leaps of logic, in connecting two or more seemingly unrelated facts to fill in the gaps of the story. It's that aha or eureka moment when you've figured something out and now everything makes sense. And that's where Sherlock Holmes' Crimes and Punishments and most every detective or investigation game I've played fails and where only a few games succeed, and succeed so well. Through your legwork in Sherlock you get access to several facts, and by combining the right two you prove to the game that you've got it, that you understand. You can just sit there and stare at the screen and try to do it all in your head, and I tried that at first, but my initial failures left me frustrated as the game flashed red telling me I was stupid. After that, I took the easy route and just tried everything with everything else, like I did combining inventory items in older games. I have to take responsibility for that, but it's a well-known thing in games that most players will seek out the quickest and easiest path to success, not the most interesting one. Even when deducing or catching people in lies, you're asked to choose from a list of responses, and it's often possible to only come to the right conclusion because the game printed it right there on the screen, feeding you the answer. Get it right and you feel no sense of accomplishment, and if you fail, you feel like the bumbling idiot Lestrade to the game's old old Sherlock. To make players feel like Sherlock, there are two ways to put the power of that eureka moment in their hands, to let them come up with the answers without prompting and without punishing their failures. And strangely, both of them are firmly rooted in the distant past of gaming. The first is a blinking cursor and fingers on the keyboard, the parser, text input, and apart from purely text adventures which make for terrible videos, the only game I've played in modern times with text input has been Her Story, and it's one of the reasons it works so well. Everyone should play it, so I'll not spoil the game here. There are deductions and leaps of logic to be made in Her Story, and it's up to you to make them. There are no prompts to choose from, nothing for players to mix and match, no real way for trial and error. Let me give you an example of something I'm just going to make up. To be clear, this is not a puzzle in her story. Okay, so you notice red pen marks on her fingers, and she mentions enjoying long holidays every year over the summer. Aha! You think, maybe she's a teacher. You type it in and get a rush of endorphins as you're proven right and rewarded with a new video or two. You figured something out. Choosing teacher from a list would have been much less rewarding. It would have been a game that practically plays itself. The other reason her story works is it allows players to progress at their own pace and without fear of failure. Sherlock asks you to perform your deduction now, at this point in time. If you haven't figured it out yet, they fail you and you have to take the test again. But because of her story's non-linearity, you're free to explore other videos and other leads until you eventually reach the teacher conclusion on your own. Apart from text input, there's one other way to ensure players come up with the solutions themselves, and that's to have so many options before them that trial and error is simply not one of them. For me, this gets no better than the 1981 board game Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. You can try visiting any numbered building on this huge map. When you do, like her story, the board game gives you an information dump and requires you to figure out the story that fits all the facts. While the game is a bit too fact heavy, when you figure something out, and from that where to go next, it comes from you or one of the other players at the table. I don't want to spoil Sherlock either, so here's another example I just made up myself. You need to find a man who assaulted someone here late last night. He's described as being average height, possessing a foreign accent, and smelling of whiskey. Hmm. You check the London guide for the nearest hotels foreigners might be staying at, finding two within walking distance. Aha! You pick the one that isn't tied to the temperance movement, pay it a visit, and score an encounter with your first suspect. You feel like an absolute genius. Sure, you can get it wrong or miss that connection entirely, but the game will wait patiently for you to figure it out instead of ruining the fun by feeding you the answer. Both of these games have only a single action that allows the player to interact with the game. 
You don't play with the pieces or play with the things on screen much. Things happen in your mind or in the conversation space between the players as you talk things through and argue your theories about the case. I really recommend playing not only the Sherlock board game, but also her story with other people in this manner, especially if it sounds like there's not enough interaction with the game to keep you interested by yourself, which a lot of people seem to struggle with. It's been suggested that her story and the Sherlock board game are barely games, that they have very little interactivity. Sure, your amount of actions per minute is extremely low, but they are also much more meaningful that I'd argue that these are the only investigation games that have the player doing anything for themselves. They're the only ones that give me that moment of piecing things together, the only ones that make me feel like Sherlock himself. In other games you're doing lots of stuff all the time, but they're mostly things you've been told to do. Walk to the mark, say the line, do it again. They tell you what to do and what to think. You don't play them. They play you. But I believe the future of adventure games lies in players thinking for themselves. Going even further than her story, I want players choosing their own actions and solving problems their own way. That's going to be the topic of a future video, maybe even my next one, so subscribe if you'd like to see more.